Good evening and welcome back to Answering Religious Error. I'm Chris Kramer filling in for Brian Garlock tonight. And tonight, we're not going to put this off any longer. Tonight, we're going to be talking about procrastination here on keeping our head on straight. Uh, is procrastination a big deal or is it just a minor inconvenience or flaw that I may have in my personal life? Uh, why must be, we be quick you know, to fulfill our to-do list? Why can't we put off until tomorrow, what we should do the day after. <laughs> um, delaying or postponing our work and responsibilities, it'll create unnecessary chaos in our lives. And you see that is understood by the world. But we will look at it from a godly perspective this evening on Answering Religious Error. So we want to thank you for joining us as we discuss procrastination and seek to keep our heads on straight when it comes to fulfilling our duties, especially in our service to God. Every night, every, excuse me, every Tuesday night, we offer the Keeping My Head on Straight Studies. And so come here at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and uh, be a part of our conversation through emailing us. You can send us a message through questions at answeringreligiousera.com. And uh, we will be answering questions every Wednesday at 12 Eastern Standard Time. That's noon, right around your lunch hour. So go ahead and uh, plan tomorrow to join us for live Bible Q&A. And you can ask us those questions and we'll answer those questions live on air. So we hope to see you tomorrow at Answering Religious Air live Bible Q&A. And we'll save some other uh, thoughts and announcements that we have toward the end of the program. So hang on as soon as we finish our study this evening. And for now, let's bring up our uh, panel and uh, get to know the men that are going to be discussing these important matters as to how we can keep our head on straight in our daily lives. Um, so, Brother Terry, it's good to be with you. Brother Bob is here, Mark Gibson, and Mark Dunnigan. So we have two different Marks, one with a C, one with a K, uh, but we appreciate you, brethren, being with us tonight. How's everyone doing? And uh, where are you at? Tell the folks a little bit about uh, where we can find you. We're doing well here in South Carolina. I'm at uh, Columbia at Airport Church of Christ. And uh, you can visit our website at airportchurchofchrist.com with a dash in between each word. You'll have it right. But we'll be glad to have you anytime. I preach for the Forest Hills Church of Christ on Sunday morning here in Macon, Georgia, and for the Hardy's Chapel Church of Christ near Gordon, Georgia, on Sunday evening. And uh, we also have a website. Uh, just type in forestillschurchofchrist.com, and it will take you to it. But uh, if you'll look in at our website, we've got past studies and sermons uh, posted there that will be beneficial for all. I'll go ahead and add that you can find Bob every Monday evening, too, on Facebook called Bob's Bible Basics. And he takes us through uh, some excellent studies of God's word. So I'll mention that again at the end of the program. Uh, Mark Gibson, good to see you this evening. Good to see you too, Chris. Good to be with everybody. I, I live in Lakeland, Florida, here in central Florida area. We're having a uh, good old Florida thunderstorm right now, but dry inside. And I preach for the Sefner Church of Christ. You can find uh, just outside of Tampa, Florida, and you can find us at sefnercoc.org. If you're ever in our area, come worship with us. Good to be with everybody tonight. Excellent. And where in your travels are you now, Mark Dunnigan? Hey, 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 Chris. How's it going? Doing great. I t tell you what, I love South Carolina, Hilton Head, uh, Beaufort, Bluffington. Uh, when you come through Macon, Georgia, eat at the H and H Cafe, uh, meet and three. And uh, Mark, what's the name of the strawberry shortcake place there in Plant City? You got to hit that. That has the milkshakes. Yeah, I can't remember offhand, but it's <laughs> 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 yeah, there's just a popular there. It's good stuff. You know, I hear, <laughs> Whatever I hear it is, cash on coming on. Uh, I've been everywhere. Hank Snow, one of yeah. the versions. <laughs> yes, I'm in a. Uh, I'm in a town named after the founder's wife, uh, Sedona, Sedona, Arizona, Red Rock country. If you've ever been to Disneyland and seen Thunder Mountain Railroad, uh, Walt Disney was trying to create on a very small scale what Sedona looks like. Sedona is amazing, Red Rock, 
formations about 150 miles north of Phoenix mm -hmm. on the way up to Flagstaff. And uh, if, if you can make it up here, I would say it's one of the prettiest places in the American Southwest on the bright edges of the country where maybe you can come out here in the morning, get your cup of coffee, and you might think about spiritual things, maybe a little bit more often, but you can do that anywhere. But they're just, Chris, there's something about the Southwest yeah. that I really, really like. Someone said it's where all the animals carry weapons, and so do the people. So good <laughs> to be on the show tonight. Well, good to have you on the show, and I hope your internet holds out tonight. We, uh, uh, I've spent a lot of my youth in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, and I know we have some watchers of the program out there, so welcome everyone. A lot of old friends that go way back. But also, um, uh, God's beauty is in everything. Uh, I'm, I'm here on the Tennessee-Kentucky border, and I was commenting to somebody earlier today. I look out my window. I don't know which way I'm facing, north, east, south, or west, but I always knew when I was out west. I could look at that horizon, see the sun rise, see the sun set, knew where I was at every time. And, you know, when God created these things, I always like to say, and of course he knew because he's God. But I always like to say, did God know just how much his people were going to just love the views and um, the ocean, the deserts? Uh, it all has its own beauty. And I'm just I'm amazed by it all. So uh, welcome from Sedona. Well, uh, as I said, I'm from the uh, Tennessee, Kentucky border. I preach up in Russellville, Kentucky at the North Side Congregation of the Church of Christ. You can find us on the Internet. So if you're in our area, uh, please contact us. We'd love to set up a study with you and any of the men that are throughout, uh, as you see the country. Uh, just let us know. We can find somebody in your area that you can study God's word with. But I'll mention it again. Just email us at questions at answering religious dot com. And before we put it off mm, too long, let's go ahead and talk about procrastination. I'd like to share this one verse with you, and then we're going to have a prayer. And then I'm going to let Mark lead our study tonight. Second Corinthians six and verse two says, for he says in a favorable time, I have listened to you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you behold. Now, let me re let me repeat that. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about now versus later uh, as we get into our study this evening. Let's bow in prayer together. Our Father in heaven, we come to you in prayer and we thank you for this beautiful day and the various places that we are throughout uh, this wonderful world that you've created for us to enjoy, to see your beauty in all things, that we know these things didn't happen just by accident, but we know that all things are by your plan and your direction. And so we see the good in your world, but we also know that there's sin. And that's why we teach with desperation your word. And we hope that all those that are listening tonight have come to hear your gospel preached, that we may know how to never put things off, but especially in our relationship with you, take care of our spiritual needs now before it is everlastingly too late so that we can look forward to a forever with you. Thank you for those that are listening. Thank you for their good hearts and help us to give you praise in all that we do. Please forgive us of our sins and keep us in your care. Be with Brother Brian as he's had some illness lately and others that, 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 that we know our family members and others that uh, we are concerned about. We thank you in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Mark, take us away. Hey, hey, you had a great passage, Chris. Uh, maybe a sister passage, Hebrews three, verse eight. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today, th that's all you have. Now, uh, the importance of doing what you need to do now. Uh, you know, there's, this is what really got me started thinking about this, Chris, was something I read that Gary Henry said. He said a lot of us claim to be stressed out over we got a lot on our plate. Man, my life is busy and that's stressing me out. He says actually what stresses people out more, which causes more anxiety, is all the things you have on the back burner that all the half-completed tasks all, all the things that you should have finished, all the things that you're putting off that you're not doing is that you, if you're right now, if you're under a lot of, you're just kind of edgy, you might want to look at how many 
uncompleted, half done, shoulda, coulda things you have in your life. Because those things can really add up and and weigh on you. It's not necessarily, I, I don't know, I, I know there's a certain amount of stress from having a busy schedule. But a busy schedule can also be invigorating. What can sap all your energy is all the things that, yeah, I, need, I know I need to do that. I know I need to do that. I know I need to do that. All that stuff on the back burner that's starting to uh, add up and pile up. I think of Revelation 3, verse 2, where Jesus talked about the church in Sardis, that he had not found any of their deeds completed. I thought that's an interesting sort of verse. But let's bring up this first question. You know, and a ton, a ton has been written about this topic, I guess because it is it is a common, I don't know, I, I hate to say the word human tendency, that, that it, it's one of those things that we can slide into. Maybe that's it. When we're not doing what we should be doing, we can really slide in to this. What if someone argues that, uh, you know, it's not a big deal, uh, just kind of a personal personality quirk flaw. And, and of course, it's interesting how people justify things of, you know, well, I like to be someone who's thorough. I like to really think through things. You know, it takes me a while to get going on things. And it, it's, it's amazing how a lot of times we can kind of justify our uh, procrastination. And again, on this show, we're not saying just jump into everything. We're not saying don't count the cost. There are certainly things that you need to procrastinate on or never do. <laughs> okay, on sinning. Yeah, on sinning. Yeah, don't be doing that. Okay, on temptation. But I think the people watching the show understand that what we're talking about tonight, we're talking about those things that you should be doing. Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about those obligations and responsibilities that, yeah, I, I, I need to be on top of that. I need to be involved in that. Kind of like James 4, the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it. Okay. We're talking about the right things to do here. But what about this first one? What about this thought is uh, it just, uh, I know, I know, but it, that's just quirky old me. You know, I just never seem to get around to anything, but that's just Chris, uh, years ago, Chris, I, I was preaching at a church and I showed up and a lady said, that young man over there, if he suddenly falls out of his seat, that's just his way. Um, and that kind of caught my attention. And so, you know, on this one, procrastination, are you walking around going like, well, but that's just kind of me. That's who I am. What, do you, what, what thoughts do you have, man? Well, I'll just start us off by saying I've heard people use that excuse a lot of times, even in the church. And, and they try to downplay it by saying, well, this isn't as bad as some of the other sins that I, that I read about. In other words, I've, I've had people say, well, I've got, a, I've got a problem with patience. Well, that's a big problem to have. You know, God talks about patience a lot. And I would just have to say, okay, as I mentioned in my introductory comments tonight, uh, the world understands the problem with procrastination. Uh, so what if somebody argues that's not a big deal? Try that with your boss. Let's see what he has to say. What are some of your thoughts, brother? Well, I was thinking we all procrastinate on a lot of things. There's a lot of jobs to do and not enough time to do them all. And so what we have to do is we have to prioritize uh, things that are most important versus things that are least important. But I think a big problem is that a lot of us don't know how valuable certain things should be to us. And therefore, we don't know how to prioritize things that that should be a priority and on top of the list of things that you should prioritize you should take care of this today as was mentioned in the opening is you got to take care of your soul jesus said what is a man profited if he gains the whole world you spend all your time trying to gain the whole world and then you lose your own soul so jesus saying your soul is more valuable than everything else in the world. So he's telling us 
don't put this on the back burner. You got to have this on the front burner. This is the thing that you've got to prioritize because it is more valuable uh, and more far reaching in consequence than anything else. I mean, you talk about eternity. Your soul is going to spend eternity somewhere. And if we don't get, pay attention to the needs of the soul, then it will, we will spend eternity in the darkness and the misery of hell. And we don't want that. But we put that off sometimes. We put that off on the back burner. I don't want to think about that right now. You don't want to think about your soul right now. When is a good time for you to think about your soul? When is a better time? to think about yourself. So once you start putting your soul way off, uh, as, as was said, uh, one of the prophets said, woe to those who put far off the day of doom. You put it far off and the day of doom comes. It's kind of like the rich man that Jesus talked about in Luke 12. He said, this man started building barns, bigger barns to store all of his goods. And he says, I'm going to take my ease. He had this plan but he had his soul not prioritized. And so the Lord said, this day, your soul is going to be required of you. And then whose things will these things be? So, so God is trying to reach us to wake up to a common sense value system that prioritizes what's important today versus what what is least important. And, and a lot of times we prioritize the small things and then we put far off the things that should be a, a priority to us. So it, I think it's very important that we understand procrastination. Uh, we all are guilty to some extent on small things, hopefully not on the large things. And so prioritize what's the most important thing and go after those things and make sure you've taken care of that. And then we'll work on the other things too. Jesus talked about weightier matters of the law, things that should be priority. Priority. Don't leave the others undone, but but really work on these as priorities. So there are prior, priority uh, matters that should be uh, up front and not postponed not procrastinate on those things. The most important thing has to be your soul's relationship to God. Where is it today? Because if it's not where it needs to be today and you're putting it off, you'll get in a habit of putting it off. And then that final day will catch you by surprise. You put it too far, far off. And now it becomes a day of doom for you. So those are things that I would think about as far as prioritizing things that should be important to us. Well, I'm glad you said we all procrastinate, Terry, because I almost begged off of the program tonight because that's one of the things I really struggle with is procrastination. And uh, I think one problem sometimes is maybe biting off more than we can chew. And we got too many irons in the fire. We don't know which one to take out first. And uh, maybe we don't have as much structure in our lives as we as we need we don't have our lives organized uh, as well as we ought to and and yes we've got to uh, take into consideration all of our responsibilities and seek to fulfill our responsibilities first and foremost and then there are some things that we would like to do but we there are things we we have to do and we've got to put those things uh, first in proverbs chapter 6 beginning with verse 6 uh, solomon said go to the ant you sluggard Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her, her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. I heard one uh, TV personality quote uh, verses 10 and 11 completely out of context uh, in, in uh, some part of his routine where he talked about, you know, you, you, you really ain't got time to sleep. 
And he quoted verses 10, 11 here. You know, you don't need to be sleepy. Well, we all need sleep. And the whole point is, he's talking about people who are always asleep, who are always uh, avoiding their responsibilities. People who not just are procrastinating, uh, not just putting things on the back burner, but putting things completely off the stove or uh, out of the oven and, and not involved with those things uh, at all. And so we've got to we've got to prioritize, as you pointed out, Terry, and and organize and structure our lives so that we can best fit in everything uh, that we have promised to do, everything that we're obligated to do, whether we're obligated ourselves by our promise or whether God obligated our, us to it by his command. But again, sometimes we can uh, just make more promises than we have time to fulfill. And we need to, uh, to avoid that uh, at all costs. These are all great thoughts and I appreciate it, brethren. Um, sometimes people just say, well, you know, it's that person's lazy. That's the problem. Or I've, you know, I've got a problem with laziness and that, that can be an issue. I mean, it's raining like crazy right now where I'm at here in Florida. And I might have left the windows down on my car and I just didn't want to get up and do it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to stop watching the TV show I was watching or reading the book I was watching. And I'm lazy and, and I end up with water all over the inside. So there can be severe consequences to that. But procrastination is much more than laziness because there's an intentionality to it. There's the idea that, you know, I know I need to do something, but I don't want to do it or I don't want to do it right now. Or I just I just don't feel like I can do it. Uh, there's something intentional about it. It's interesting to know that the word comes from the Latin procrastinus, which means pro, meaning forward or toward. And procrastinus is the word for tomorrow or about tomorrow. So it's toward tomorrow. And that's the whole idea of the word. You're putting off tomorrow what you can do today or right now. You're, you're intentionally saying, I'm not going to do that right now. I may need to do it right now, but I don't want to do it for whatever reason. Like Terry said, it may be a misplacement of priorities. It may be a misunderstanding that I don't always have tomorrow. It may not ever get done what needs to be done. But there is an intentional decision that's made there. It's more than just laziness. It's intentionally deciding I'm not going to do that now. Even though it ought to be done right now, I'm not going to do it right now for whatever reason, fear, misplacement of priorities, whatever the case may be. And God takes it seriously. Someone say, well, just a quirk, a flaw. No, God takes it seriously. Even he told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 21, when you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. There's the idea you don't procrastinate. You don't make an intentional choice to say, well, I'm just not going to pay that right now. I may have the money or I may have what I need to give to this person, but I'm not going to do that right now. The Lord says you don't delay to do that. It matters to God. So just don't say oh, it's just me, just the way I am. Well, the Lord doesn't want you to be that way. What if, we, what if the Lord was that way? I, I read in... Uh, I read in Psalm chapter 70, verse 5, uh, the psalmist said, I am poor and needy. Make haste to me, O God. What if God said, well, not right now. Um, I'll do it later. Well, thank you, Lord. For, but the Lord's not like that. The Lord does help us. And I think we should have the attitude of the psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 60. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. There's things that need to be done. And there's your priority again, uh, Terry. It's the mm -hmm. Lord's will that needs to be done. And that's, I mean, I may leave the windows down on my car, shame on me. But if I leave the Lord's will undone, and I think we'll talk about James 4 before we're done sure. tonight. Sure. Um, that's where it gets serious. That's not a personality flaw or quirk. That's an issue with my soul. One of the things we got to consider, too, is that we're not talking about just knee-jerk reactions to everything that needs to be done. Uh, oftentimes, when we procrastinate, we find that we have to rush out in the rain and roll those windows up. We put ourselves in precarious positions all of a sudden because we, we have to. So why not take care of things before? You know, 
couple of uh, your brethren have mentioned uh, privately and on the program tonight that, you know, it's something we struggle with. I don't know that I'm the right person to be teaching this. But you see, with age comes wisdom. And I think we can learn a lot from the mistakes that we have made. Not only do we have the divine inspiration from God's word to show us the way that we need to be in taking care of matters, especially spiritual matters, but we could all sit around and just tell a whole night of stories of things we procrastinated on. You know, that that sale we missed out on at the store, you know, because we waited too long, you know, uh, always finding a reason to to uh, that perfectionist in us, or we always want to find a good deal. How many gas pumps do we typically drive to hoping that we find a better deal down the road when we're traveling? And I'll tell you what happens to me every time, I always end up paying more because I just didn't stop and take care of it when I needed to. If we wait, we miss out. A couple of things I might share before we go on to our next question is, this is not just a minor personality flaw or quirk we're talking about here. It's a matter of being wise or unwise. I'd like to look at Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17 to justify that statement, where it says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. There are a lot of principles in there about everything in life. And if we don't take care of the business at hand, then we are not making good use of the time that God has afforded us and allotted us to do his will. And how much time, and I've heard this from a lot of people that have become Christians later in life, uh, they wasted so many years and they regret that because they could have been doing so much for the kingdom of God. Well, Mark, uh, lead us into our next thoughts here. What do we have? For our next question there, Chris, let's bring that particular question up. What are the things that most people tend to put off for some distant one of these days? It's interesting, Chris. I think a lot of people fail to realize that you might say there's a pride or an arrogance behind pro procrastination because there's this assumption I will always have time later. There's this assumption, and James deals with that, of making plans, thinking like, well, I got the whole year ahead of me. And, and, and if condemnation comes on people that make plans that they're going to do without factoring, you may not be here tomorrow. And how much more is God going to jump on someone who says, there are things that I need to do, but I I've always got time later. And I think that's one of the dangerous things spiritually about procrastination is there's this false sense of security. Uh, I'm always going to have tomorrow. I'm always going to have time to do that. I'm always going to have time to get that done. I think of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in shul. That is, man, death ends everything. It may end, does it in existence, but it ends the opportunity to do what you need to do in this life. You don't get to come back and do any re -over, do overs, etc. I think of the classic passage in Acts chapter 24, verse 25 where the man that Paul is preaching to says, go away for the present time, and when I have opportunity, I will call you. That sense that, oh, I'm always going to have opportunity later. But gentlemen, what are, the, uh, what are the things that most people tend to put off? What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, the thing that you were just mentioning, uh, Felix, uh, putting it off, saying that uh, when I have a convenient time, salvation. I think people put off, I think people have in the back of their mind uh, a suspicion that there is eternity. They have a suspicion that there may be. But they're not going to explore the evidence of Jesus right now. They're not going to explore the evidence of the Bible right now that uh, they think, well, it's just not convenient right now. And so I think that's the number one thing. 
I would bring in on that re- in that regard this passage in Romans 13, verse 11, where Paul says, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. You've been in a fog. You've been in a, uh, a, sleep, a state of apathy and sleep, spiritual sleep. And it's time to wake up. Uh, we should be waking up and looking at things that are happening to our country. But think about what's happening to yourself. Wake up. Wake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. He's writing to Christians. And sometimes Christians kind of go into a law or go into a sleep pattern. He says, you got to wake up. It's, it's high time to wake up. Uh, because we're closer. We've never been as close to eternity as we are today. I've never been this close. You've never been this close either. We're as, we're as close today as we've ever been. So this is not a time to go to sleep spiritually. This is time to wake up. Be sure that our eyes are open to what's happening all around us. But he says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I think putting on the armor of light is part of, part of what's involved with exploring the truth, exploring the evidence of God and Jesus being the son of God. You're putting on an armor of light in the process of coming to believe the evidence is very powerful and strong. And once you realize that, uh, you put on this armor of light and then you start, he says, verse 13, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in licentiousness and lewdness, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. When should I do that? Tomorrow? No, today. It's high time to wake up today. And uh, realize our soul, the souls of our children, people that we need to be influencing for good, for eternity, our children, our grandchildren, they need us to be a light today. They don't need to uh, be looking at us in a casket and wondering where we're going. They need to know now. I know where my granddaddy is going. He, he displayed his priorities. I know where my grandmother is going because I know what her priorities were. You know, that's, that's what's got to be done today for the benefit of not only ourselves, but for generations to come. We've got to be the light and the salt of the earth. And we got to start that today. We got to wake up today. And so I think this is what people tend to put off in some distant future. One of these days, preacher, I'm going to, I'm going to take to heart what you're talking about right now. One of these days, I'll do that. I know what you're saying, but I, I don't have time right now. And I think we're, we're uh, deceiving ourselves if we think that we know we've got time tomorrow. You know, when I give that, when I give that invitation on Sunday morning, I'd like to see it answered right then. <laughs> I'm just, don't call me impatient. I just think the reason we preach with such urgency is we know, you know, that time we don't know how much time we have and we preach with desperation bob what do you have one of our viewers richard dodson suggested we look at hosea chapter one verses three through eight and i thought well that would be a good thing so uh hey guy or haggai yeah thank you haggai said then the word of the lord came to ha- by haggai the prophet saying is it time for you your you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. 
this was written by Haggai just after the Jews returned from Babylonian captivity. They had been 70 years away from the temple. The temple uh, had been destroyed by the Babylonians. It lay in ruins, and yet they were dilly-dallying, procrastinating, and taking care of other things that they considered more important. And even then, they were not uh, satisfying themselves, even with the things that they were doing. They were sowing much, bringing in a little, eating, but not eating enough. And, and so even the things that they were engaged in were not fulfilling. And I, and I believe the reason that they were not fulfilling is that the physical things is because they were not involved in the spiritual things. Nothing was should have been more important to them at that time than rebuilding that temple. For the alien center today, nothing should be more important than becoming a Christian. And for the Christian, nothing should be more important than not only uh, sharing the gospel with others, but manifesting spiritual growth yourself. And we cannot afford to, to say, as so many have pointed out tonight, uh, well, I know I've got to grow, but I'll start putting forth effort uh, later. I've got, I've, I'm just 35 years old. I've got uh, 45 years, maybe, and I can start my spiritual growth a little. We don't know how much time we have. As Terry pointed out, we're closer to eternity now than we ever have been. And we don't know that we're going to get any closer. Uh, eternity could come at any moment. And we've got to be ready for it. That means we can't afford to procrastinate where our spiritual condition is concerned. And of course, these other things are necessary as well. But our spiritual responsibilities and obligations should certainly take priority. There were a couple of things I noted in the scriptures uh, that it points out that people often uh, do not do or put off. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, come and or go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Doing what's due to others, what's good to do, don't delay in doing that, he says. And he wouldn't warn that unless it's just it's common to us to just put off things. Uh, Galatians 6 and verse 10, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Again, why the exhortation? Well, we go out and do what we like to do. We have recreation. We enjoy things. But the responsibility of doing good to others seems to escape a lot of us. And therefore, these exhortations there, uh, we've referred to James chapter four, uh, verse 13, come now you who say today or tomorrow, we will do such and such. You know, we got lots of time. Mark mentioned that we have lots of time. We'll do this or that. And of course, he had, he, he admonishes them. You do not know what time you have. Life is but a vapor appears for a little while and goes away. He warns them of that arrogance in verse 16 of just saying, I've got plenty of time. I'll take care of it. I'll get to it. And that's why he gets to him in verse 17, to him who knows to do good and doeth it not. What's that mean in the context? You put it off. You could have done it, but you put it off. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, if that verse gets as close to anything as calling procrastination sin, that's it. You knew to do good, and you didn't do it. You made an intentional decision to put it off. That's sinful. And one other thing I'll mention is we, uh, the Bible mentions that uh, often we put off dealing with problems that we deal with, issues in our life that we ought to correct, sins. And I've often used the example of, the, uh, of Moses and Pharaoh and Exodus chapter 8, the second plague, the frogs. God brought frogs upon the land of Egypt. It was, ever, it was in their kitchens, in their beds, frogs everywhere. And, the, and, if, and they couldn't stand it any longer. And Pharaoh said, Moses, get rid of these frogs. And Moses uh, told Pharaoh in verse 9, look, tell me when you want me to entreat the Lord. And I've always wondered, maybe I'm missing something here. But Pharaoh then says in verse 10, tomorrow, entreat the Lord tomorrow. If I was Pharaoh, I would have said, well, why don't you do it right now? <laughs> get these frogs out of my bed. Get them out of my house. Why did he say tomorrow? And I've seen sermons about sleeping with the frogs one more night. Uh, 
why did he delay? I don't know, but he should have got rid of that problem. And you know, some people have problems with drinking, alcohol. You need to deal with that today. You don't need to say, well, I'll deal with it next week. You've got problems with lust in your heart. Don't put that off. It's only going to get worse. Deal with that today. Don't say, oh, tomorrow I'll entreat the Lord about that. So we often put off dealing with problems that we have because we don't want to deal with them. Maybe Pharaoh, I don't know why he said tomorrow, but we often say tomorrow and we don't deal with our problems. That's my thoughts. It's the classic passage that teaches us, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. You know, we often teach that in regard to take care of the problem, you know, before it's too late. Um, there, are, there are a lot of things that we can tend to put off uh, to one of these days that will never come around. We've talked about obedience to God quite a bit, but I'm, I'm reminded of Acts 24 and verse 25 and looking at Felix. And um, I think it was mentioned a little bit earlier in the lesson. So I apologize if I'm being repetitive, but it says in, in this passage, he reasoned about righteousness and self-control in the coming judgment. Now you think that that would be a motivating factor for, for people to say, okay, here's what I need to do. I, I need to obey God. I need to repent and be baptized and do those things that the Lord's taught, taught us to do. When I look at examples like Jonah, and Jonah went to Nineveh, he wasn't happy about going, uh, preaching, I'm just going to use the word repentance to these people, but his actual words were, uh, in 40 days, you're going to be overthrown. Uh, now, I don't know all the particular words that Jonah said, but Jonah wasn't walking through town saying, y'all need to repent and get things right or it's over. No, he went to that town saying, you're going to be overthrown. I'm going to go park up on a hill and watch you guys burn. And that's exactly what he thought he was going to do. He did not give them a message of hope. He gave them a message of doom and gloom. And what did those people do? They repented. <laughs> the, the message of destruction caused them to repent. Nobody had to tell them, repent, repent, repent. They knew what they needed to do. We know when we're wrong. We know when we're in sin. And we know when we put off something until tomorrow or like the old Cat Garfield comic. I don't know if y'all remember that, but Cat Garfield was just a fat, lazy slob cat that just sat around eating lasagna all day. And his catchphrase was, never put off until tomorrow what you can do the day after. And that's why he was the way he was. And we laugh about that, but that's the way a lot of people live their lives. They put off obedience to God. They put off work. And I'm going to admit from a guy that's guilty of this, you put off your health. You put off your health. I know I need to diet. I need to walk. I need to do a lot of things. And I'm working on those things right now because I had some wake up calls lately. I have some family members that are struggling and dealing with some things. And we need a wake up call every once in a while to realize that what I was going to do two years ago, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to start getting it right because I've got to take care of my health. If I want to use this body in service to God, I want to give it a few more years. I want some more time with my grandchildren. What about saving? When are you going to start saving your money? How often do we procrastinate saving our money until one day that old quote unquote rainy day comes and we don't have the funds to cover it. And we find ourselves in a bind in a pinch because we didn't put away that money we needed to. And a lot of us learn those by mistakes as well. What about our relationships? You know, what about picking up that phone and, and calling somebody you hadn't talked to in a while? Wondering if they're still your friend, you know, uh, what about working on, on making things right with some people that maybe you've wronged, especially before the end comes. And of course, I'm going to throw in one other, and that's telling others about the gospel of God. If you, Hebrews chapter four, excuse me, Hebrews chapter three, Verses 12 through 13 says this. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. It's bad enough that you would withhold yourself from obedience to God. But are you withholding obedience to God to someone else? Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your neighbors. Maybe it's a close family member. Maybe it's just a guy down the street, or maybe it's a friend that you haven't talked to in 20 years. Have you withheld the gospel from them because you thought, I'll get around to it later? They don't have that kind of time, and you have a responsibility. Brother Mark. Chris, I was thinking of, if you were putting together like a lesson of uh, 
common attitudes behind procrastination. I, I think it would be the attitude, I will always have time later. Uh, there will be other opportunities. Number two, it's not the right time. They're not ideal circumstances in my mind. Number three, it will be easier to obey later. Down the road, uh, I'll be more honest in a year from now. I will want to quit my drinking six months from now. I will have more self-control next year. Um, uh, you know, I, I, the, uh, you know, I will want to repent then, I think is a common attitude. Um, you know, whatever you put on the back burner, you, you need to realize that if it's on the back burner, it's not that important to you. Just it's kind of to come to terms with that. Um, I've never heard anyone say, you know, I just can't find the time to eat that Snickers bar. I, I just, you know, it's just like I, I would like to have some ice cream, but I just can't find any time to go and get the ice cream. Uh, you know, I am so busy or, you know, I'm, a, you know, I, I'd like to do that, but I just kind of feeling puny right now. That doesn't tend to keep us from doing anything that we really want that we really want to do at this moment um we just need to be honest about you're right it's all the hard things doctor health diet exercise money manage management all the self-control issues all the hard things but uh no no one says like well i just can't find time to um, watch my favorite football game <laughs> or whatever. That's never the excuse. Um, we'll be looking on time here, Chris. Ah, ur urgency, urgency, we have, we the have issue of urgency. Moment. Yeah. We can go you know, for the next it, couple of questions, I think. Genesis 20, verse 3 Abimelech has Sarah, and of course, he's, he does realize that she's married to Abraham. Okay. Abimelech is dreaming, you know, snort, snort, you know, going through his dream stages, whatever. And God shows up. Abimelech, you get, you got a, a married woman and you're a dead man. And I'm impressed that early in the morning, <laughs> he takes care of that, right? He takes care of, you know, Chris, it's interesting though, that God says, if you don't give her back, what? I mean, I mean, that's even a, like someone would even do that. Are you, uh, to the audience, is there anything you're doing right now that God says, you keep doing that, you're a dead man? Sense of urgency. Other thoughts, gentlemen? I think of um, the Philippian jailer. Uh, when he was shaken by the earthquake and the disturbance of thinking that his prisoners had escaped, it said he came in trembling and asked, uh, men, what, you know, what must I do to be saved? And they told him the word of God and it says in the same hour of the night, he was baptized. He'd washed their stripes, showing repentance toward God and toward them. And then he was baptized. And this was after midnight. The urgency was there. And I think that's very important for people to remember that you don't put baptism way off. Uh, you know, I'm convicted today. I think I'm saved today. And I can be baptized two weeks from now. No, baptism is part of the equation that puts you into Christ. Galatians 6, or 326 says, we're baptized into Christ. You're not you're not in Christ until you're baptized into him. So the Philippian jailer was urgent about that. He had a sense of urgency. And I don't care what time of night and morning this is. I've got to be baptized now. And the urgency was there in doing what he knew he needed to do. And I think people have lost that uh, or never knew the urgency of uh, being baptized into Christ. So the Bible does deal with that in that case. And there's probably others uh, where a person wasn't urgent, like the, like the man we mentioned a while ago that said, I'm going to take my ease. And Bill built, he built bigger barns, and he didn't realize his soul was required of him that night. He didn't see the urgency. 
Philippian jailer saw the urgency, but the, the uh, rich fool did not. And that's unfortunate. Which category are we going to be in? The foolish category or the wise category? Terry, there was somebody told in Scripture, why do you wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Of course, that was Ananias to Saul of Tarsus. The Philippian, or not, you mentioned Philippian jailer. The, the Ethiopian eunuch said, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? He saw the opportunity. He wasn't going to put it off. He might have said, well, I'll just wait till I get home. I'm, uh, I'm, on, a, I'm on a journey here. No, he said, oh, we're going to stop the chariot and take care of this right now. Jesus, I think, also taught urgency, and he, urgency when he said, um, we work during the day. They're at night coming when no man can work. We must, I must do my work. In other words, Jesus said, it's urgent that I get my work done because there's a time to do it because there's going to come a time where we can't do it. And some of you mentioned about that to where uh, there's going to come a time, the end of our life, we're going to leave things undone or somebody's going to see us in the coffin and think about the things they should have said or done and didn't get done. Uh, so those are some passages that go along with what you were saying, Terry. Perhaps others have mm -hmm. some thoughts. You know, everybody remembers the last words of Rhett Butler at the end of Gone with the Wind. I'm not going to quote those, but we we tend to forget the last words of uh, Scarlett O'Hara. She's sitting at the bottom of the stairs. Rhett has left. She doesn't know what she's going to do. There's a lot of decisions she's going to have to make. He's not going to be around to help her. And she says, well, tomorrow's another day. And she turns around and walks up the stairs, presumably to go to bed. And so she just wasn't going to deal with them then. Uh, she did not sense the urgency of dealing with the problems that she had created for herself. And I know it's a fictional uh, story, but it's nevertheless so true to life that people uh, will get them to create problems for themselves and, and yet feel no sense of urgency to correct those problems. And we need to do that. We need to... We need to deal with it uh, as soon as we can. Yep. As uh, Barney Five would say, that was a big moulage, right? Right, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> he threw that one into his program last night, so I had to revisit it. Um, you know, uh, Proverbs 20, verse 4 says, The sluggard does not plow in the autumn. He will seek at harvest and have nothing. And so we, we point out for several passages tonight that the time is now. The urgency is now. And, of course, I don't think we've brought up yet uh, the classic case of uh, Matthew chapter 25 and uh, verses 12 and following or verses 2 and following that discuss the parable of the, the wise virgins and the unwise, the foolish. And I'll just read a portion of it to set up the story. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For the foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil in their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. But at that time, the foolish virgins had uh, asked you know, the wise, can we have some of your oil? And they're like, no, we, we brought this prepared for us. You, you should have brought extra for yourself. We didn't know what time the bridegroom was going to come. We needed to be prepared always. One of the things that you're not going to do is stand there and see the Son of God coming through the clouds and decide then that you're going to get ready. There's not going to be a mad rush to the church building and baptistries. There's not going to be a time when we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And we've got to look at the fact that uh, while we're out preparing and, and wasting our time of something that we should have already done, we've missed the boat. We've missed the, the salvation. Whether you want to look at Matthew 25 as, as about the church and, and coming or a lot of people like to relate it to Judgment Day itself. I'm not going to argue that point this evening, but I will say that it doesn't matter. The application is the same. We need to be prepared because we don't know when it'll be too late. I don't know, and, and pardon this, I know that people do suffer with this, but I don't know that tomorrow I won't suffer some kind of catastrophic event in my life. Maybe a stroke, maybe a car accident that could take away my mental faculty to make things right with God. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow will bring, and maybe the Lord will return. But while I'm here, 
while there is today. I can get things right with God today. That's within my power. That's within what I can do. And God's not going to hinder those that want to render obedience to his will. Proverbs 9, 119 and 60 says, hasten to keep his commands. Rush toward it, not away from it. That's what people are doing today. They're running away from keeping the commands of God. We only have a couple minutes left in our program tonight. So, Mark, why don't you finish us out with this uh, last point that kind of hinges on what we've been talking about, I think. Yeah, the importance of obedience and our repentance being quick. And I think the thought is that every moment, Chris, that goes by without doing what you know you need to do, uh, you lose your incentive. You, you're losing your momentum. You're losing your motivation. I think there's a number of passages tonight that were like that, particularly Acts 24, verse 25. When I have a convenient season or when I have a convenient um, opportunity that this this thought I'll, I'll always have more time no knowing that but uh, Carrie had said something Chris I remember when I knew I needed to be baptized and that day I was not thinking you know if something happens to me today and I don't make it to the baptistry I think I still think God will understand and I'll be okay no, it was a thought, if I'm not immersed, I'm lost. And if you're thinking that, well, but God knows my heart and et cetera. No, Th there's a sense of urgency with the jailer. Sirs, what must it do to be saved? Acts 2 verse 40, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Or as Jesus said, strive to enter by the narrow door. You got to do it now. Pull the trigger now. Get in through the narrow door now. The thought with the virgins when the door is shut and and you'll be on the outside knocking, saying, Lord, let us in. We knew you. We ate with you, etc. Too late. No second chances. Those are my thoughts, Chris. I'm not sure if my phone's going to make it. So if you see me go, uh, I go. <laughs> Chris, both you and uh, Mark mentioned the wives and foolish virgins. And uh, I just want to make mention that growing up in a denomination, one of the songs that we would sing over the years in our children's classes was a little chorus, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. But God is not the one that's going to provide that oil. We've got to put the oil in our lamp. That's the whole purpose of the passage. We must keep our flasks full of oil, and our flasks of oil at hand so that we can keep our lamps full and keep them burning. Uh, if they go out, that's all she wrote. It what is your life? We are to be a light that shines in the world. You know, right. Jesus taught us that uh, we do so in order to give God the glory. Brother Terry? Yeah. Yeah. What is your life? It's a vapor. It appears for a little time, then it vanishes away. Better take advantage of the opportunity now. And I pray that somebody's listening and their hearts will be touched by the things we've talked about tonight. Don't delay taking it to heart. And God doesn't delay. He is not slack as some men count slackness, but he doesn't want anyone to perish. And that's why he's waiting. And that's why we've got to take advantage of our opportunities now. Excellent, excellent thoughts, one and all. Um, there are so many things, our obedience, our response to the Lord, it, it needs to be now. I, it, it discourages me to hear people talk about whether or not they're ready to come to the Lord. If you're in sin, you need to come to the Lord. And like I said earlier, that's why we preach with such uh, desperation. Isaiah 55 and verse 6 says to seek the Lord while he may be found. And that's taught all through scriptures. There's going to come a day when we can't seek him anymore. There's going to come a day when that that opportunity is closed. And so we need to make things right with God today. There's a lot more we could say on this subject, but hopefully uh, another time we'll be able to get around to that. We've been on for an hour. We appreciate our listening audience sticking with us tonight. Guys, it's been great being with you today. Uh, I think we'll see some of one another tomorrow as we come back for our Q&A study. And uh, so don't procrastinate. 
uh, make plans to be with us tomorrow at noon. So you gentlemen have a great night and uh, be careful wherever you might be. You do the same. So again, tomorrow, we'd like to invite you all to be with us here at uh, the live Bible Q&A starting at noon Eastern Standard Time. And so we hope that you will tune in for that. And if you'd like to ask a question, uh, just email us at questions at answering religious error.com. I'll bring that up on the screen here so you can copy that down while I make a couple of other comments. Questions at answering religious error.com. Uh, we'll be discussing some backlog of questions that we've had for a while, but we'd love to see your comments. We appreciate so much the comments made in tonight's study, uh, Brother Richard Dodson. A uh, good friend has uh, uh, been commenting quite a bit tonight, and you can find him on Facebook. Just look up the Southside Congregation in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Brother Richard does various videos as well as a, um, a program much like this called Berean Spirits on Thursday morning at uh, 10 Central Standard Time. So you can find that Southside Church of Christ, Springfield, Missouri. But we also want to tell everyone about uh, another program that airs every Thursday night, and that is Older Women Likewise. It's a show for women, by women, and uh, Brother Mark's wife is on there. And uh, you can tune in, uh, ladies who are looking to strengthen their relationship with God, their understanding of the Bible, and you will be enriched and inspired uh, by the ladies of Older Women Likewise. That's Thursdays at 8 p.m. I'll remind you again to tune in Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bob's Bible Basics. Bob has a great mind of the gospel, as you already know, but he's taking us through the Bible. And every time I know I listen to him, I learn a little something more than I didn't know. And he brings things to mind. So we really appreciate his work and knowledge of God's word. Well, thank you for being with us tonight. We'll be back next Tuesday night for a live study as well. And we'll be talking about God and fun. Hmm. What do we mean by that? Join us next time right here on Answering Religious Error, and we'll answer those questions for you, and we hope that you'll be a part of those discussions. Have a great night, everyone. May God bless you in your search for his truth.